Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Mr. Tide Eye. Uh, if you guys are not subscribed, I ask that you please do that and click the little notification bell. That way you can stay up to date with all of my videos and my live shows. Uh, and plus it just helps make my channel easier to find. So please subscribe. I would appreciate that if you find value in my channel. So today we're going to do a part two to uh, the mystical magical spiral uh, video that I put up last year. Uh, it was just the same design, you know, spiral design tie, but I dyed it in eight different ways just to show the different effects. And there's so many more ways that it can be dyed up. And I've had a bunch of questions, and plus that video kind of went to uh, top spot in the viewing. Uh, it seemed like you guys really liked it, so here is part two. So I'm going to tie up a bunch more t-shirts. Uh, I'll go ahead and tie one on screen and just kind of explain so that if you are brand new and want to learn, you can still learn everything from this video. Um, and then I'll just tie up a whole bunch more t-shirts, I don't know, six or eight, and then I'll go through and dye them all differently and show you the, how they come out. Okay, so as to start with, I have a t-shirt that's been soaked in soda ash, it's been spun out, and it's just barely damp. That's my preferred method for tying and dyeing them. Uh, I also turn mine inside out. Every now and then some of the little dye particles won't dissolve all the way, and they can leave tiny little spots on your t-shirt. Uh, so if you don't want those, if you work on the inside, then those spots will be mostly on the inside of your t-shirt. So that's the reason why I turn mine inside out. So anyways, uh, I'm just going to start pinching and twisting here. So I usually will just pinch just kind of down from the collar so it puts the spiral center of the spiral right on the chest. That's just my preferred method. It's also, I guess, kind of right across from the armpits here. And I'm not doing any kind of a special pleated twist, but I like to just try to keep all of my pleats straightened out here. And I'll add new ones in because I like to have my t-shirt about the same level. Uh, but you do you can tie your spirals however you like to do it. This is just my preferred method uh, Once I get it twist a little bit then I can hold that center spot and I can just slowly kind of wrap the t-shirt around it And that way I have more control over my pleats here if I stretch the t-shirt out It creates these pleats and then I can just wrap them right along the edges here so that just helps me and also putting my hand on it helps then keep this here at a nice even layer level here. So that's why I'm doing that and I just keep switching my hands back and forth and I'm just every time I'm doing this I'm pulling out with this hand here to create these pleats and then I wrap them along. So that is how I like to do my spirals. I just switch back and forth with both hands here. And then usually I tie my stuff up with kite string, but I've had a few people ask me about rubber bands, if they're good to use or not. Um, I used to use rubber bands for many years with tie-dye, and they are perfectly awesome for, for tying things up. Uh, I just prefer now to use the kite string because of the extra control it gives me, but I decided to go ahead and do the rubber bands on these spiral t-shirts, just to kind of give you some hints if you're having troubles getting your rubber bands on. Uh, what I usually will do is put two or three fingers in to give me enough gap here between these that it'll fit over top of the t-shirt. And then I will lay this down where the bottom of the rubber band is flat on the table. And I just kind of drag it right underneath. That way you can leave the shirt in place. And then just slowly release the rubber band and get it right where you want it. And that way you're not, if you have to pick up the t-shirt to put the rubber band on, then some of your design can fall out. So I like to have it sit as still as possible and then I can make my little adjustments. I stretch that out and just slide it right under. And then the other thing I like to do is line up the rubber bands right over top of the middle, right where I started twisting my initial pinch and twist. I like to cross the rubber bands right there at that spot. And what that does then is create my dying lines. If I'm going to do like a rainbow spiral with six pies, then I have my six pies already labeled out here. I don't have to even try and draw them on or just wing it. So that's another nice thing about the rubber bands. You can just utilize them for double purpose there. 
So there's my first spiral there. I'm gonna tie up several more just like this and then I'll put on some gloves and we'll do some different methods of dyeing these up. So stay tuned. Okay, for this first one, I'm gonna do a three color uh, rainbow spiral uh, using just the primary colors. So I have turquoise, I have fuchsia, and I have lemon yellow. Uh, I had done one on the last video where I overlapped the colors and actually made the seven colors of the rainbow, or six colors. <laughs> um, but this time I'm just going to color two squares of each color here and there'll be just where the colors are touching. You're going to have just a little bit, you know, like so where the blue and the, the turquoise and the yellow touch, there'll be just a thin strip of green. So that's what I'm going to do for the first one. We're going to do that in super speed mode. Okay, there's the three color rainbow spiral with just primary colors and just little thin strips of the secondary colors in there. So you'll see the results here in about two seconds. Okay, it's time to do the reveals on these. So this is the three color rainbow spiral I did. I colored two pieces in each of the primary colors. So let's open this up and see what we got here. So that's looking good. So we got the wider spaces because I colored two instead of just one space. And we got just a little bit of purple in here, a little bit of orange, and then of course a little bit of green in there. So looking pretty good. Let's get to the next one here. Okay, we're back for another one. Uh, this one here, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to use just the three primary colors, but instead of dyeing two pieces side by side, I'm going to dye opposite pieces. So I'll do two blue, two fuchsia, and two in the lemon yellow. And then on the back side, instead of putting the same color, so if I dyed blue on the bottom here, I'm not going to put blue here. I'm going to put the blue in these other spots. So I'm just going to kind of rotate my colors around the wheel there. Okay, so now last time <clears throat> on the top side I put the turquoise <clears throat> in this spot. I'm going to move it over here over top of the yellow. <clears throat> and then I'm going to take my yellow which was here. I'm going to move it over so it's going to go in the spot where the fuchsia was. Three color rainbow spiral pinwheel DNA. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Here's the three color rainbow spiral where I did two, two, and two. And then on the bottom side, I rotated the colors. So fuchsia up here on the top and then fuchsia on the bottom in this next space. So all of the colors are rotated one space. Okay, there we have it. Okay, and this way we're going to do uh, the tidal wave swaparoo. <laughs> so the the tidal wave is one when I dye three pieces in each color and flip it over and dye the same colors on the bottom side. This time we're going to dye three spaces and then on the bottom side we're going to do a swaparoo and switch the colors. So I'm going to start out with a bright green that I mix up myself. Uh, I use the lemon, uh, lemon yellow. I fill up probably three quarters of the bottle, whatever size bottle you're using. Or you can even mix the powder, but I basically do three parts lemon yellow, one part turquoise. And that gets me this bright green color here. So I'm going to dye three spaces in bright green.
The color that I'm going to use is a darker blue. It's sapphire blue. So there should be a nice contrast between the brighter green and the darker blue. Okay, there it is, and you'll have the results in about two seconds. Okay, here's the tidal wave swaparoo. So I put blue and green on here, and then on the bottom side, I've swapped the colors. And right now, I think I just got some other colors from the other t-shirts wrenching out here, but those will wash out. But that just gives me some nice blues and greens scattered throughout the whole team. Okay, this time we're going to do some red, white, and blue. I do have a playlist, uh, red, white, and blue, or 4th of July playlist, that has some other ways that I've dyed things in red, white, and blue. And I probably will cut this out of the video and put it over on that playlist also. But uh, this is a meditation uh, idea that came to me. So we're just going to try it out. I haven't done it before, so this is a, an experiment for me. But I have a general idea of how it's going to turn out. So what I'm going to do is apply some uh, red dye to this side and I'm going to use a foam brush and I'm going to color it, paint it on in lines going like this and then when I flip it over I'm going to put blue going on in the opposite direction. So we're going to have red and white on this side, blue and white on the bottom side with the, the lines going in different directions. So let's see how that goes. So usually what I'll do is just go ahead and squirt some out on the table and then I use my handy dandy little foam brush and you can just paint on in this way you're applying just a small amount to dye. You can try squirting the liquid on but you're going to end up with less white and this one here I wanted it to have a lot of white in it. So applying the foam with the foam brush just allows you to apply a smaller amount to dye or put it on a little bit slower so it doesn't soak in too far. But if you continue to apply it with the brush, you can get it to fully saturate. I think I know some dyers that that's, that's how they use the apply their dye is with these brushes. But I'm just doing kind of just one one quick pass on here so that I'm just saturating just the tops of these folds. Okay, now we're going to, the, the red was uh, Fire Red from Dharma, and this here is Sapphire Blue from Dharma, and I put just a, a quick squirt of uh, cobalt in there just to darken it up just a little bit for me. So, and the other reason why I squirt this on a table instead of putting it in a little cup and dipping this in is because the shirt has soda ash on it, and as I apply the dye, to the t-shirt I'm getting a little bit of transfer there and I don't want to take if I have a little cup of dye and I keep dipping my brush in each time I do that I'm adding just a little bit more soda ash I mean it's not a whole lot but it's just enough that if you're not going to use up all that dye within a couple days then the soda ash could activate it and it might just slowly lighten up on you before you finish using it up so this way, everything that I squirt on the table is the dye that I'm going to use during this process and anything else that I don't use, I'll just wipe it up. But usually I'll squirt out just enough for me to use and then that way I'm not wasting any dye and I'm not taking a chance that soda ash is getting into my dye. Okay, so there's the red, white, and blue. Um, I don't even know what to call this one yet, but we'll come up with a name. I'm going to batch that for 48 hours, and then you're going to see the results here in about two seconds. 
All right, it's time for the red, white, and blue. So I put three strips of red, white, uh, red on the top here, and left white in the in the middle here. And it's a little bit stained right now, but that'll all wash out. And then on the bottom, I did the same thing. I put blue going in the opposite direction there. So that's the red, white, and blue rainbow wild spiral. So there we have it. All right, let's get. The Okay, this one's going to be a rainbow wild spiral. So we're going to put our dies on in lines going one direction. On the bottom side, we're going to put them on going a different direction. Okay, this time I'm changing. I put my colors on this way on the front side or the top side, and now I'm going to go diag or horizontally. And this here is fuchsia from Dharma. This here is deep orange, and then I'm also using lemon yellow, my bright green, sapphire blue and then plum that I have watered down into this nice light purple. Okay, the rainbow wild spiral is done. So I'm gonna let this batch 48 hours and then you will see the results in about two seconds. Thank you. Okay, and here's the rainbow wild spiral where I put rainbow colors on in this direction on the top and on the bottom I put them on going the other direction. So that just kind of mixes that rainbow spiral up a little bit, gives me some colors in different places. So there you have it. Okay, this one here we're going to do a DNA spiral 2.0. So I did a DNA spiral in the last one where I shifted half a space. This time I'm going to shift the whole space. And I'm going to do this one in rainbow colors. So my rainbow colors is fuchsia, deep orange, lemon yellow, bright green, turquoise, and that light plum mix. I mixed up plum and then I watered it way down to give me a light lavender looking purple. So I'm going to go ahead and follow my color circle around. So I'm going to swap colors. This is where the fuchsia was on the top side. So on this side, I'm going to move it over one space to the orange and then the same thing. My orange will go here. My yellow will go here. So I'm just going to work that spiral all the way around the circle here. All right, here's the next one. As you know, we colored this one here. Uh, it was the DNA 2.0. So on the front, I colored one side and then I shifted the color one whole space to the side. So let's open that up. So yeah, that looks pretty cool. Of course, I've done some of these before, but not on video, so there you go. We got the orange here, we got the orange here, but this is orange and yellow, this is orange and pink. This here is pink and purple, this is pink and blue, so looking good. Okay, the next one's going to be a nautilus shell rainbow spiral. So once again we're gonna do the rainbow colors on the top, and then I'm gonna do a solid uh, turquoise on the bottom. So I've done the, the ones with the black lines through it but you can do any color for the the nautilus shell look so let's get this thing dyed up
Okay, here's another one. This one I colored in rainbow colors on one side, and then the back side, I put the turquoise on there. So let's open this up. So there's what we have when you dye, like I said, I've done these with the black on there, but you can use any color. Of course, you get a little bit of color mixing in there, but I just like the look of having other colors show up in the back. Well, not the back, it shows up on both sides. <laughs> Sorry. Anyways, we'll get on to the next. Okay, here we go with another wild creation from my meditations. Uh, this one here, I'm going to do a rainbow spiral on one side, and the other side, I'm going to do two colors for the, the Nautilus shell look. So what I'm going to do to start out with, this here is the, the side that was down. So it's got the nice flat uh, area here. I'm going to go ahead and dye that one in a light, bright color. And then later on, I'm going to cover this up with black. And that will give me two colors coming through for the, the Nautilus shells, or the, the lines that go through the spiral. But I like to put this on first so it can start soaking in, and by the time I go to apply the black to it, this here, I mean, it's not dry, but it's not as quite as wet. So it just, I think the colors just go on better that way they've had a chance to sit a little bit and this time I'm using red in my spiral and I also have emerald green and then the rest of the colors are the same the deep orange lemon yellow sapphire blue with a squirt of cobalt in it and my light plummy purple And this time I'm going to apply my dye with a foam brush because I don't want to get too much black on here and have it completely overtake the green. I want to be able to see the separation of the green and the black in there. So, and this here is just regular, my regular black dye. It's not thickened in any way. But applying it with a brush just allows me to be able to apply it minimally and still have some of that green color left in there. So I'm just going to apply one quick coat. Okay, here we go with another rainbow spiral. And this one here, we did the two different colors on the back. We put the light green first and then the black over top just to give a little bit more texture. So there you have it. You can see those nice black lines, but you got green in there too. So that's kind of fun.